Well, I'm working on my house this morning. It's 65 degrees out already. So, I'm trying to reuse most of the boards that were already up. take a lot longer and a lot more materials to do it with a tar paper on each row but it's definitely going to be longer lasting it'll be worth it I had to go get my level because the tendency is to go crooked on these and uh, I don't see it when I'm up in my face with it so I'm going to get my level and check every couple of them here and there make sure I'm not I start to get a, a skew one way or another and you just don't see it until you back off and then you gotta pull a whole bunch off and start over again and that's just putting holes in the house so I want to do this once and do it right I'm doing each and every one with a level now I got a, a tiny little level there's just no other way to get it back here you can see, bring you over to the side, get a better view of what I'm, what I'm doing. Because uh, there's just no other way to do this right. Tim and I had tried three times to try to get some shingles on, and we kept going off at an angle. Because they're cut crooked, and they're also not straight wood. They're just not straight boards, so with, with imperfect materials, it's just not possible to get it right by eye, eyeing it up. So each and every one, I line it up to the bottom, give me the overlap that I need, and then bring it level. And each one is straight. Any gaps in the between where the rain might want to run through is obviously going to run off the tar paper underneath and down and out. So now I'm going to have a good house done right. Oh, Pieces of firewood left over here. Gonna knock the nail out of each and every piece. Be reusing the ones that were up there. Use the level, line it up, check the level, put it in. So it's going to go, it's not taking too long. Well, that one's warped in a bad way. <clears throat> Laying at the bottom. Oh, see that's... That's terrible off. 
Well, that's probably not a straight board. Hey, where'd my nail go? Oh, I'm gonna have to run through here with a magnet later. Nails just fall out. So, I'm gonna continue on up to the edge of the door and then stop and then do the second row and uh, just continue on up. It's probably gonna get too hot to work out here this afternoon in the direct sunlight and I probably don't have much tar paper so we'll see how much I have and how high I can go on here but I don't expect this to be a fast quick project. I don't expect to be done in a couple days with homemade pallet wood siding but I do hope to finish the front of the house soon so I can start my porch and that'll also help keep the, uh, the summer sun off the side of the house on the south side and provide me with a greenhouse so I can start my aquaponics because the fish need a stable temperature well it's getting warmer I got one row done, then I worked on some video for a while. Now I'm gonna run a chalk line on here. I wanna have seven inches of exposure. Take a nail in there. Help. a mind of its own. Really hard to work with alone, I think. I'm not an expert. Oh, that's right, I didn't want to go exactly. I want to have that just above there. I don't want the tire paper to be visible.
place or in the next row. Now there's no way anything's going to run up underneath that uh, and get behind that wood from above. The, the rain will always run down and out, and down and out. So I'll start in the next row. have to cover the gaps in between Definitely going to be more time consuming, but it'll be good. It won't be as heavy on the tiny house. By the way, the house is level. I have double checked it so that I know that I'm doing the right uh, angles here. I don't know if the wind is interfering with my voice or not. Unfortunately, I can only get three strips per, or three rows per uh, strip of tar paper. So I'm going to definitely have to go get some more tar paper. But I think it's going to look very nice when it's done. Um, I'm really liking the way it's going to be. I'm happy with it. Well, what do you think? It's looking better. It's getting there. Now I've got to put another chalk line. 
and uh, start the next draw. It takes time, it takes a long time, but in the spirit of DIY, that's what I gotta do. paper now I'm gonna have a sit down with you in a few minutes and explain everything and the method for my madness we'll get to that in a few minutes here I'll be taking a break to rehydrate because it is hot for me it's hot it's well over 70 degrees out right now No water getting down underneath those layers because now you see we've got an overlap this goes underneath this entire shingle all the way down and overlaps upwards a long way so there's so much overlap here now I want to thank you all for the uh, advice and suggestions and help to stop me from messing up yeah this is not accurate but it doesn't matter will never be seen. I just need this up there. Do a few more shingles on here and I'll take a break and explain what's going on and what my thoughts, plans, and ideas are. And hopefully uh, you'll understand and have some patience with me as we work together here in this project. I see we as in you the viewer who are helping and advising and suggesting all the time. Well, I think it's certainly going to look very nice. I like it. I like it a lot. And with the tar paper on there, I know I keep repeating myself right now, but with the tar paper it's going to be fine. There's a lot of overlap. There is a whole lot of overlap. So there's not going to be any water getting underneath anything now. I feel really good about it now. Now around the door, uh, as I promised, I'm going to explain some things here. So. Let me just zoom out a minute. 
Let me zoom way out and bring the camera up a little. Now in the door here, I'm going to stop along the straight edge, right up against the, the edge of the door frame, okay? And then what I'm going to do is put a board, a 1x4 piece along here. So I'm going to seal, I'll silicone or tar up in here in this gap before I put on the final trim piece. So as it is, this is held up and no rainwater has gotten in throughout the entire winter. So uh, it's held up, but once I close this gap, then I'll probably put some tar in that gap, some roofing tar, and then I'll put a 1x4 on here to cover this entire edge of the, uh, the frame of the door. So that'll trim it off all the way around. And then same around the windows, I'm going to come up to the window with the siding, and then I'll put a 1x4 around it. And I'm going to have flashing up on top. I still have to get it. I noticed somebody mentioned flashing. But I'm not that far yet. I'm not even that high. I'm just on the bottom of the house. Now, I do have an overhang, a good inch overhang underneath the house so that the, the water will never get up and run underneath. So it'll always run off and out. So it's always going to come out, come out, come out. With the layers that I have here now, there's no way that water can get underneath a board. So when the water hits this board and goes in between the gaps, it's going to hit the tar paper underneath, causing it to run out. Now with the overlap, because the top of these boards ends right here, so I've got this much overlap. So there's no way that water can ever get up underneath there again now. This is, this is definitely going to be good. And if it... It can't, but if it did, there's still tar paper, which, as you have seen, can withstand an entire season outdoors. Well, it can withstand years outdoors, as it is, without any harm. It would eventually dry out and get brittle and deteriorate. But with it underneath multiple layers of tar paper, plus the shingles, this tar paper here will last, this will outlive me. And then the exterior grade sheathing underneath, it could withstand the weather, the elements, on its own. So I've got multiple layers of waterproof and protection. So I have no problem and no doubt that this is going to be fine. It's going to last throughout the, the seasons. So I'm really liking it. I really like the looks of it. I don't like how long it takes. It's time consuming. But again, um, I know a lot of people keep uh, getting on my case and saying, why don't you just buy siding and be done with it? Well, there's two reasons. One, I don't have the money. So that's a big one right there. And if I did, who would I be helping uh, by doing what everybody else does and just buy siding? The idea of the do-it-yourself world and the off-grid project is to do things yourself and to save money by using reclaimed lumber. This uh, free reclaimed pallet wood is going to be... It's free. <laughs> it's going to look beautiful. It's unique. I don't know of any homes that have ever been done like this. Uh, not to mention a tiny house on wheels. And um, it's it's free I mean that's the idea of what I do is to show people if you lose your job if you lose your home if you lose everything you can still have a house for free it doesn't cost it doesn't have to cost you you can just uh, salvage materials it takes longer it takes a lot longer and I'm gonna see this through and yeah, my house is going to take longer to build, but that's because I'm using all reclaimed materials right now. Everything you see on the front of this house was free. Everything here, the windows, the doors, the upstairs window, um, just the tar paper I paid for, obviously. But even the um, sheathing underneath was free. Everything was free. So, definitely... Definitely in the spirit of do-it-yourself, 
I'm going to continue on with this path and finish this siding. I want to finish this siding myself using free pallet wood. I know a lot of people are getting mad at me, but I guess those people uh, want to see people build new houses, new construction. Well, that's not the purpose of this. This is a to help people. So I hope you all understand that. And I hope you just enjoy the videos. So I'm going to go in and take another break. It is so hot in the sun right there up against that house with that tar paper. And I see baby cat walking on the kitchen counter, which she's not allowed to do.